crack. I mean, crack's basically the same thing as Coke, right? Yeah, it's, it's just cooked. it's just cooked. It's in a cooked pot. with some baking soda or something like that. Yeah. Uh, did, did, I don't know. I never made it. Never tried. it. You never tried smoking crack? No. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I always said I was like I would like to try it once just because I've seen so many movies about it. <laughs> like what's his How name? About it? Wall Street. Yeah. It won't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Might, lead, there, might lead you out. You might end up sucking dick somewhere because you need more. <laughs> that. Watch yourself. <laughs> was it there an NBA player who uh, who died? From yeah, that? Len Bias. That changed the world. How did it change the world? That was before my time. Right. When so Len Bias that, died, he was he was he was. Drafted by Boston Celtics, right? So this is where it becomes interesting. The Boston Celtics, who's in charge of the Boston area? Kennedy, right? The Kennedys run the Boston whole area, the Martha's Vineyard shit and all that stuff. So when Len Bias smoked on that crack and killed himself, he never got a chance to play. The best player in the NBA, you know, best player at the time drafted, never played one game for the uh, Boston Celtics. Ted Was he Ken really drafted number one? He's number one, yeah. Wow. Ted Kennedy uh, came up with these laws, these crack laws, and said we need to crack down on the crack laws and, and, and these crackers and these crack babies and all this other shit. So he went haywire. He put these laws in place, which, which did a great job. I mean, five years later, after Giuliani took over, you can walk in Manhattan on like Disneyland. You know, 42nd Street was clean. Everything was clean. Oh. So the crack laws eventually did their job. The problem was along the way, the crack laws alienated a lot of people and a lot of people got burned by crack itself, including myself. You know, it was part of my demise was the, the money from crack in the street. Right. And the, the crack law specifically were basically if you got busted with crack, it was way worse of a, right. a prison or a jail right. sentence. But, but yeah, but not in versus the city. Coke. Right. Not in the city, but in the feds. So in that's how feds. it became effective. Ted ah. Kennedy was a federal uh, federal um, senator. Senator from from. Boston area, right. Massachusetts. So he and Joe Biden and that crew put together these vicious crack laws to help clean up the cities, and it did. It's just when it cleaned it up, it was they were vacant. Really, Joe Biden was around back then. Oh yeah, he's That's still around. Crazy. He's Fucker. still he's barely hanging on now. Fucker. <laughs> And then mm. when did that start changing? Didn't didn't Obama start trying to roll that back and try to? Yeah, you know what it was. Uh, and, and so so to his credit, he tried. But the, the reality is, Democrats are always considered weak on crime, right? So if he was able to pull off what he wanted, which he wanted everybody to free, because clearly he's still running shit. You do know that, right? He's still Obama. He's, he's running this. Yes, he, he's running this right now. So so what happened was they they didn't want. I thought it was goddamn Nancy Pelosi. No, no, he's running this. Uh, they didn't want. Um, they didn't want Trump to be the, the, the guy who cleaned up their drug mess, their drug penalty problems. So every, so every time Trump wanted to introduce something, they would not, they wouldn't go for it because they didn't want anything positive on Trump. So he had he ended up doing executive order to promote and you know, what he called pardon this one, pardon that one. He was pardoning these people, and he did change some of the sentencing laws. And and what happens is people don't realize is that most sentencing laws, they're, they're oppressive sentencing laws, but they're designed for a reason. They're designed to make you want to tell on me, okay? And that's what is the, 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 that's why the laws were designed the way they were. Mm. So, and every person is given that opportunity at some point, usually. Not all, but usually most individuals are given an opportunity to, to cooperate. In Kenny's case, he cooperated without going to prison. He cooperated, stayed in the street, put a wire on against me. And then, you know, so he won. But anyway, um, so th that's why the laws were designed the way they were. So they would be very heavy-handed in their sentencing, and they would bring... So one of the, one of the things was they, they wanted everybody to be arrested. That was the federal goal, to arrest every person selling drugs. It's the best idea they could come up with. And, and, that, and that was their approach. So if you came to... If you got arrested by the feds, or city and the feds joint task force, you, if you brought in 25 of your best friends... You would get a two-year sentence, and each one of your friends would cooperate against each other, and they'd all get five-year sentences. So you'd win, get two, they'd get five, and then they could go home. If they didn't cooperate, they got 50. So, so they all fucking turned on each other. That's a crazy and they, fucking system. Yeah, and they filled the fucking prisons up, and they cleaned the city streets out. And then most of those guys came out, and they, they got the hint. You know, they, they get the hint now. If you did a one to ten, if five repeated, you know, whatever. But the fact is, when you sit down for eight, ten years, fifteen year stretches, you know, you, you, you're just tired. You just, you know, they beat you out. They beat you down, and they and they did that to most of the people. And if they and if they didn't straighten their lives out, they know what the next. They know they were offered a forty five year plea, and they got offered six. Right. So they know the next time they show up, there's no offer. You know, you're going. 
Do you think most of these crimes or most of this violence and everything would be, a lot of people say that a lot of this stuff would be fixed if just all this shit was legal? Okay, so my, my thing on drugs laws is there should be none. No, no drug no laws. No drug laws. Yeah, the war on drugs was complete fucking. It's a disaster. Yeah. It's been a disaster. More people have died fighting the war on drugs than people that have died using drugs. And it's just created billionaires in Mexico and Colombia. Yeah, right. And I, I, I'd like a piece of that fucking money myself, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. But, <laughs> I don't, but I'm not, you know, not allowed. So and, You got your and, fair uh, share, Mike, uh, okay? Well, that's what they say, but I came out broken, uh, you know. Really? You didn't stash any before you got locked up? Well, you know, you don't think you're going to get locked up until you do. Mm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know, four houses in a condo on the ocean. You a lot of cash laid into them things. You didn't bury any cash anywhere? <laughs> no. A little bit, but not so, much. <laughs> so what did you actually get charged with? What was your actual charge? Was it was it uh, RICO? Yeah, I was eventually charged with a RICO statute, but that, that would that consumed or subsumed or you know contained the uh, actions uh, throughout my career. Uh, so um, so uh, when I walked in, they offered me a, a plea agreement for um, 24 to 30 years. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? This is what you this you get it. I walk into prison. Never been arrested in my life, right? I was a cop. I'm a pretty good kid, you know. Uh, I walked in. I was off at a plea for twenty four to thirty years, and I'm like, "Are they fucking serious?" Like my lawyer's like, "Calm down." You know, this is just the first. I said, "Just the first offer at thirty fucking years." I mean, who did I kill? Of course, a month later they put a story about me killing nine people. But anyway, which I didn't. But um, so like. Can you imagine, like, you're facing 30 fucking years? I'm like, what did I do? You know, I, I, I took some fucking money. How old were you at the time? At that time, I was 31. Yeah. I took some money from some drug dealers. So what the fuck? You know, I, we just exchanged. We bought it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but you, you know what? It, I laugh about it now, but it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a nice thing that I did. I, I love the part of the documentary where you said that uh, you took from one of your first busts or one of your first, uh, you basically robbed a drug dealer. When you went into his house, you saw the big giant bag of uh, of marijuana, and then you found a couple oh. of guns and some and some oh, yeah, cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was and you said one. you took that money and you went and bought a condo in Myrtle Beach. No, that was the, that was the cocaine. Oh, that was Noriega's cocaine. Hmm. Yeah, that was Manny Noriega's cocaine. That's what we bought the condo oh, with. So you you sold his cocaine? Yeah. Where did you sell the cocaine at? I don't remember. I gave it to somebody to sell. I don't like. And in the street and sell it to anybody. Right, right, right. He gave it to my partner. He gave it to a, Oh, he gave it to the Con Ed guy. The guy who ran Con Ed. <laughs> Some guy was working in Con Ed. <laughs> they had a good connect in Con Ed. Oh, my God. It was the best Peruvian fucking pink flake you ever saw in your life. That's insane. I can't even I imagine. I bought the condo with that money. That was Noriega's cocaine. Really? Yeah. And how much was, uh, how much was the price of cocaine per kilo? 28000 28000 a kilo. Then. Then, but... Consist, consistently went down. It ended up down about eleven thousand dollars when I got in eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty nine. And it just constantly went down. It didn't fluctuate. Was it, it like Bitcoin, it, where it goes up and down? No, no. It, it, it would go, it would eventually go up, which is why we ended up getting arrested. Really? How yeah. how does how does that make so so cocaine went from eleven thousand and it worked its way up to fifteen thousand a kilo, mm -hmm. and it was steady. And then what happened was it went from seventeen five to thirty four. Overnight, because it was uh, Easter holiday, and Colombians are very religious, you know, yeah. so they don't ship cocaine around yeah. Easter. They they just you know they they cut their fucking movement back, and there was a shortage, and maybe a couple of big busts happened, so the cocaine price doubled. So at that very week that it doubled, Kenny and I got into our own little supply business.